Hello again guys and welcome to the second part of the lecture on the introduction to vectors and some operations on vectors. In the first video, we have been introduced to the basics of vectors, how to compute the magnitude and direction angles. In this video, we will perform some basic operations on vectors like scalar multiplication and addition and subtraction. We begin with scalar multiplication. So we let A be a vector with components A1, A2, A3, and C be a real number. We will also call C a scalar. Then the product of the scalar C with the vector A is the vector with components CA1, CA2, CA3. You can think of scalar multiplication as multiplying each component of the vector by the same scalar C. Now the zero scalar multiplied to any vector will result in the zero vector. And the norm of the resulting vector CA is equal to the absolute value of C times the norm of A. Take note that CA is a vector but the norm is a scalar. If C is positive, then the vector CA points in the same direction as the original A. In this example, 2a points in the same direction as a. However, if c is negative, then the scalar product ca is in the opposite direction of a. Also, if the absolute value of c is greater than 1, then the resulting vector ca is longer than the original vector. As in this case, the vector 2a is actually twice as long as the original vector a. Now, if the absolute value of c is less than 1, then the resulting vector is shorter than the original vector a. In this case, negative 1 half a is half as long as the original vector a. And since c is negative, it also points in the opposite direction. Two non-zero vectors v1 and v2 are said to be parallel if and only if the other is a scalar multiple of the other vector. That is, v2 can be written as a scalar c times the vector v1 for some scalar r which in r which is non-zero. Now we move on to vector addition and subtraction. Suppose we are given two vectors say A with components A1, A2, and A3, and B with components B1, B2, and B3. Then the sum of the vectors A and B denoted as A plus B is another ve vector whose components are A1 plus B1, B2 plus B2, A3 plus B3. Or in, in short, the sum of the vectors A and B is another vector whose components are the sum of the components of A and B. Similarly, the difference between two vectors A and B denoted A minus B is, the dif is a vector whose components are the differences between the components of A and B. Now visually, we can look at the sum of two vectors this way. Suppose you are given the vector A and the vector B. Now we'll position B such that its initial point coincides with the terminal point of A. Then, the resulting vector A plus B will be a vector whose initial point coincides with the initial point of A and terminal point coincides with the terminal point of B. Now for the difference, we put the vector B such that its initial point coincides with the initial point of A. Take note of the difference. In the sum, we put B to have initial point coinciding with the terminal point of A. In the difference, we put B such that A and B will have the same initial point. And then, we take negative B. Remember that negative B is just the scalar negative 1 times the vector B. Therefore, it will point in the other direction. And therefore, the resulting vector A minus B will be a vector whose initial point is the same as the initial point of negative B 
and terminal point the same as a terminal point of A. This method of representing the sum and difference of two vectors is called the triangle method. There is another method to visually represent the sum and difference of two vectors, which we call the parallelogram method. In this method, we write A and B such that the initial point of B coincides with the terminal point of A. Then, we, have another, we write another copy of the vector B whose initial point coincides with the initial point of A, and another copy of the vector A whose initial point coincides with the terminal point of B. If you look at it this way, we form a parallelogram. Therefore, in this parallelogram, the diagonal starting from the initial point of A to the terminal point of B is the sum of the two vectors, A and B. The other diagonal will be the difference of the two vectors, A and B. Now the difference, A minus B, has initial point the same as the initial point of B and terminal point the same as the terminal point of A. Now let us take a look at some examples. Given a vector A with components 1, 2, 3, and a ve vector B with components negative 4, 5, and negative 6, let us find the following. First, let us find the sum of A and B. As we know, the sum of A and B is another vector whose components are the sum of the components of A and B. In other words, the resulting vector A plus B is a vector whose first component is 1 plus negative 4, which is negative 3. The second component is 2 plus 5, so it's 7. And the third component is 3 minus 6, which is equal to negative 3. Next, let us determine the vector 2a minus b. So first, we compute the vector 2a. Again, this is the vector a multiplied by the scalar 2. As we know, this is just a vector whose components are 2 times the components of a. Hence, the vector 2a will have components 2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times 2, which is 4, and 2 times 3, which is 6. And then now, subtracting the vector b from the vector 2a, we have the resulting vector is 2 minus negative 4, so 6, 4 minus 5, which is negative 1, and 6 minus negative 6 equals 12. So therefore, the vector 2a minus b is the vector 6, negative 1, 12. Now how about the norm of the vector 3a plus 2b? First, we compute the vector 3a plus 2b. So again, we multiply the vector a by 3, so which gives us the vector 3, 6, 9. And then we multiply the vector b by 2, so which gives us negative 8, 10, negative 12. And adding these two vectors, we have 3 minus 8 is negative 5, 6 plus 10 is 16, and 9 plus negative 12 equals negative 3. Therefore, the vector 3a plus 2b has components negative 5, 16, negative 3. Now, taking the norm of this resulting vector, recall that the formula for the norm of a vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So therefore, the norm of 3a plus 2b is the square root of 25 plus 256 plus 9, which gives us the square root of 290. In the previous video, we mentioned about a unit vector. Now recall that a unit vector is just a vector whose norm is equal to 1. Now suppose we are given a non-zero vector v. We can define another vector u sub v to be the vector 1 over magnitude of v times v. Take note that the magnitude of v is a scalar, so this is actually a scalar multiple of v. Now the vector u sub v 
is a very special vector because it is a unit vector that points in the same direction as the original vector v. Indeed, if we take the norm of the vector u sub v, this is just equal to the norm of the scalar 1 over the norm of v times the vector v. Now, we know from our previous remark that the norm of a scalar times a vector is equal to the absolute value of the scalar times the norm of the vector v. Now, since the norm of the vector v is always positive, then we can ignore this absolute value symbol and just multiply 1 over the norm of v times the norm of v, which is equal to 1. Now, this shows us that the vector u sub v is a unit vector. Furthermore, we can show that the vector v is actually a scalar multiple of the vector u. Hence, the vector u sub v and v are parallel. This means that they either point in the same direction or the opposite directions. But since the scalar multiple is, par is par positive, therefore, they point in the same direction. Another interesting fact about the vector u sub v is that it, its components are the direction cosines of the vector v. So this process of, of obtaining the vector u sub v from the vector v or obtaining a unit vector that points in the same direction as a given vector v is called normalization. So let's have some examples of how to normalize a vector. So given the points P with coordinates 3, negative 1, 1, and another point Q with coordinates 0, 5, negative 1, let us find the unit vector that has the same direction as the vector PQ. Or in other words, let us normalize the vector PQ. Recall that the vector PQ will have components equal to the difference between the coordinates of the terminal point and the initial point. So 0 minus 3 is negative 3, 5 minus negative 1 is 6, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 1. So therefore, we have the vector PQ to be negative 3, 6, negative 2. Taking the norm of PQ, we have the square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9. 6 squared is 36 and minus 2 squared is 4. So we have square root of 49 or equal to 7. Hence, the unit vector u sub pq, which points in the same direction as the vector pq, is given by the vector pq divided by its norm. So we have 1 over 7 times the vector pq. This gives us the unit vector minus 3 over 7, 6 over 7, minus 2 over 7. Now let's look at another example. So find the vector of norm 5 that has the same direction as the vector v with components 1, negative 1, 2. Now first observe that the norm of v is equal to the square root of 1 plus 4 plus 4, or equals 3. But we are looking for a vector of norm 5. Take note that the vector of norm, of norm 5 should be 5 times as long as the unit vector in the same direction as the vector v. And the unit vector along the vector v is actually the vector u sub v. Therefore, the desired vector must be 5 times the normalized vector of v. Or in other words, 5 times u sub v. So by definition, u sub v is... 1 over the norm of v times v. So the desired vector is 5 over the norm of v times v. Since the norm of v is 3, we have 5 thirds times the vector v. Or the desired, desired vector is 5 thirds, negative 10 thirds, 10 thirds. Now we look at another way to write the components of a vector. First consider these unit vectors i hat with components 1, 0, 0, j hat with components 0, 1, 0, and k hat with components 0, 0, 1. 
looking at their position representation, the vector i hat has 0, x, and z coordinates. So therefore, it lies on the positive x-axis. Indeed, it is a unit vector that points in the direction of the positive x-axis. Similarly, j hat is a unit vector that points in the direction of the positive y-axis, and k hat is a unit vector that points in the direction of the positive z-axis. Therefore, any vector v with components a, b, c can be written as the sum of the scalars a times the vector 1, 0, 0 plus b times the vector 0, 1, 0 plus the scalar c times 0, 0, 1. And hence, the vector v can be written as a i hat plus b j hat plus c k hat. For this reason, the unit vectors i hat, j hat, and k hat are called the standard basis vectors in the three-dimensional space R3. Simply speaking, any vector v can be written as in terms of the standard basis vectors. For example, the vector 3, 5, negative 2 can be written as 3i hat plus 5j hat minus 2k hat. The vector 1, 0, 3 can be written as 1i hat plus 0j hat plus 3k hat, or simply i hat plus 3k hat. And the vector 0, 7, negative 4 can be written as 7j hat minus 4k hat. So this ends the lecture on the introduction to vectors and some operations on vectors. I hope you learned something from these two videos and please make sure to check out and watch the discussion videos that come with these lectures. These are some exercises that you can do on your own. Thank you.